In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you 30 different lighting setups. First setup that we're going to do is a very popular lighting technique and it's called the Rembrandt lighting technique. And what that is, is you're going to be taking a key light and we have our key light right here, which is just a rectangular diffusion. It's a glow easy up. I like these, but typically you would see a circular diffusion. The reason for that is because you're going to have a catch light that's a circle in the eye, which is a lot more natural and flattering to the viewer than a rectangle, which is not a very natural shape in an eye as a catch light, which I'll show you in a second. But this is all we have. So this is what we're going to use. You always use just what you have if you can to get the job done. But nevertheless, what you're going to do is you're going to take your key light, which is going to be your main source of light and you're going to be positioning it where your subject is that chair we're going to be positioning it 45 degrees off and then you're going to adjust it until you start to get a little bit of a triangle on the fill side or on the broad side of your subject and i'll show you that in a second the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your light kind of raised up and then angled down so you want it a little bit above the subject's head and then from there what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of different variants of the rembrandt light because you can have very unique looks with just those variants of that, or just adding a little bit extra to it. And in the back right over here, we just have Dubatine put up because we wanted to keep our subject for this cool idea that I had. So we wanted to keep me in the exact same spot for every single shot or close to it. So we had to build a kind of a, a weird black backdrop for this, but I wanted to show you guys with black backdrop so that you're not getting distracted by everything behind to really see what this looks like. But not only with lighting setups can you have all these different variants but location can be such a huge thing and we're not going to even dive into really that today we're just going to be focusing on the lighting techniques for interview setups next what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the rembrandt lights so we're not going to change anything on that side and then on our fill side we're going to bring in a flag and what that's going to do is all around us this light is hitting the walls and bouncing off in it and it's creating a little bit of spill onto our fill side. So we're gonna make our fill darker. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're just taking this Dubatine that connected to some styrofoam and I'm gonna put it on my C-stand like this. We're gonna clip it, bring it in just so we can darken the fill side. Similar to having a flag on our fill side, now we're kind of doing the opposite and we're going to have a silver bounce and what this is is it's just a insulation board that i bought at home depot it comes huge at eight by four feet and i just cut them down and then use some gaff tape on the edges so that the styrofoam won't break up anymore and we have a nice silver side right here that we're going to use to put on our fill All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a rembrandt with our key light being a book light and so we've gotten rid of the softbox. And what we're doing now is we're going to be using this bounce board right here. We're going to be using this four by four diffusion that I'm going to bring in in a second. I can kind of show you guys right here, this four by four diffusion. It's a Westcott four by four scrim gym. And it's just a one fourth, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it's a one fourth. And we're going to be putting our light, which is the aperture, Again, this is a 600. You don't need to have a 600. We've been using this at 0.1%. This is just what I have out here. Uh, you can use something a lot less powerful to achieve the same looks, all right? Uh, just use what you have. This is what I have to use. What we're gonna be doing is bouncing the light and then it's gonna be bouncing from here and hitting here, which is gonna cause a much softer light. And it's gonna give us a softer look on the face for the Rembrandt. So we're gonna position it. There's two ways that you can usually position a book light. One is you can put the light completely underneath here and shoot it up this way and it'll hit into here, or you can put it off to this side. Now what we're doing is we're doing something called cove lighting or gradient lighting. And what this is, is we're using three lights, which is a lot, but what we're trying to do is do this wrap around lighting effect on your key side. And you start with a brighter light and then you have your next light and you have a little bit more dim and then you have your last light on the front and a little bit more dim and it starts from bright to darker to darkest and it's a nice smooth gradient across the face and the way that we're doing this is we have our 600 way too bright and we have it diffused with the scrim gym and then diffusion paper just to turn it down even more 
Um, and then we have another four by four scrim gym right here. And that's on a 300D by Aperture. And then lastly, we have an Amaran and we have this on a soft box and that's a 200D Amaran. And everything that I'm listing here will be in the link below if you guys are curious about any of this equipment. And we're just trying to create this smooth gradient from bright to darker and then to your fill side, which is gonna be your darkest point. What we're gonna be doing is something called split lighting. In split lighting, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your light source or your key light, and that's what we're gonna start with, and you're gonna wanna put it directly perpendicular or to the side of your subject like this, because we're only gonna be lighting half the face. Obviously it's not on and that one is on, but you get the point. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing a split short. And what a split short is, is you're gonna take your fill side and you're gonna face it more towards the camera. So all you're gonna do is rotate like this. And then we've already done it, but we're just gonna move our light back. So it's still on 50% of the face. And then you're having your darker or your fill side facing towards the camera more. And then you're just looking over the camera like this. All right, now what we're gonna do is split broad. And what split broad is, yep, is the opposite. This is kind of like Dora the Explorer there. What's split broad? That's right. <laughs> All right, so split broad is just the opposite. Now we're gonna have our fill side facing towards the camera. And it doesn't mean you actually have to turn. You know, you could have your fill side come from the side. It do that doesn't matter. It's just where your key light's coming from. And now we're gonna move our key light right here. The next slide I'm gonna show you guys is the butterfly light. And the butterfly light is taking your key light and putting it above your subject, but not directly above your subject, a little bit angled. And the indicators that you're gonna be looking for is a nice shadow under the nose that you do not want to have touch the upper lip, and then an even shadow underneath the neck right here. Things to think about when doing this is you're gonna want a C-stand or something like what I have right here, which is a mini max boom. You were gonna want something that's gonna go directly above and then angle like this, slightly angled, and then you're gonna see it. All right, the next setup that we're doing is something called flat lighting. And what flat lighting is, is that you're gonna have even lighting on both your key and your fill side, so they're gonna be identical. And the best way to do this is to have an identical setup. And right now what I have is I have a 600D by aperture on that side and a 600D on this side. You're gonna want them at the same 45 degree angle on both sides, same power, same height, same angle, just mirroring each other. Now that we have done the flat light, what I've done now is just rotated the lights or moved them back a little bit, a little bit behind our subject, creating a shadow right here. And what that lighting setup is called is Badger. And I guess it kind of looks like a badger maybe in the shadow of his face, I'm not exactly sure. But we have them close to what a flat light would be, but a little bit more behind the subject and pushing this way. And then again, it's creating that striped shadow right down there. Oh, I get it, because there's a stripe, like a badger has a stripe, right? Why don't they just call it the skunk? I guess that's not as appealing. There you go. All right, you guys, this is clamshell lighting. And the reason why it's called clamshell lighting is because you have a light pointing up at 45 degree angle and light pointing down at 45 degrees. And it looks like a clamshell with your pearl, your camera, right in the center. And this is really great for beauty lighting, giving a nice, even, beautiful light to the face with a gradient coming off the back because you're dead center instead of having flat lighting. So what we're doing is the key and rim. And the difference between a rim light and a hair light is hair light is gonna be directly behind the subject, illuminating the hair. A rim light is gonna be hitting the edge where it's gonna illuminate the side, back side of your subject's face and the shoulder. So this is a rim light. Right now we have it on barn doors with a grid because I wanna flag off uh, this right here so it's not spilling onto our background. And then right here, we have our key light, which is just the rectangular softbox with a grid on it. And the trick with this is you're gonna want to have your highlight stronger that's hitting right here. And then your key light is gonna be 
a little bit darker and it's gonna bring from bright to darkness. It's just a different look. All right, the next setup that we're doing is top light. Very similar to butterfly, but now it's gonna be directly above. And what we have is we have our 300D on a lantern with a skirt so that the light doesn't spill out and it's going directly down onto your character. Very cool for say like if you want to have somebody in a vast dark open space that looks very ominous. It's gonna be a very cool setup. It's one of my favorite. All we've done is moved our light down below now and this is a very common look that you see in old school horror films. Not something that you probably use too much for interview setups nowadays unless maybe you're just trying to do a fun thing at a haunted house maybe. I don't know, but bottom light, we just have the lantern, we're just pointing it straight up, which is giving this very eerie look to the person's face that's very unnatural because light doesn't usually come from the ground. We're now doing a high key look, and this is what you're gonna see in light and bright commercials, sitcoms, and then this is a very clean, airy, happy feeling look. You'll see in beauty commercials as well. So what we have is we have our uh, key light, which is gonna be the softbox, rectangular softbox, like always. It's a lot brighter now because we are fighting against our background light. And I'll show you guys that in a second, but we have it at 25% on the grid. And then for our fill, we just have a silver reflector. And then let's go to the back to kind of bring this whole key look together. This is Savage Transloom Paper. And I know a lot of people like to have white uh, back a white paper background and they like to put their lights evenly in the background but I kind of like the look where it's like a little bit more radial and it shoots through the back and illuminates the paper I think it's a lot cooler of a look and I'll show you how we did that right here I have my 300 Nova you can use whatever you want but since I'm fighting the brightness of those lights with these lights we just have a lot bright, brighter lights and these are what I have so we're using this against the background right now don't mind the shadow the shadow is because we have a a really bright light trying to fight the other light so you can see me right now, otherwise it'd be too dark. But we have the 300 dead in the center, just shooting out and trying to evenly spread across this paper. It's illuminating this paper to create a very clean white background. Again, I'll have all these different products in my link in the description below. The reason why I have this set up like this when I was saying earlier with the high key is because this is gonna make it really easy to give us a colored background because now we're gonna do colored gels. So I can pretty much change this Nova to anything I want. If I go into the menu, I mean light mode, and say we wanna do green, we wanna do orange, maybe we wanna do red, let's do red, yeah. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna gel our lights and I'm using these gels right here. I'll put these in the link below. These are blue gels and I'm gonna use a red on the opposite side. I'm still gonna use this as my key and think about it like that. So I'm just gonna take these gels, I'm just gonna clip them on to right here. You gotta be careful, these lights do get hot. So just be very careful with that. Boom, boom. You can use gap tape too, which kind of helps a little bit. And then I have it on the four by four right here. Diffusion, boom. And then on the other side, we're gonna be using the Nova in red. All right, I hope that you guys learned something from this tutorial. I hope that it was a lot of fun and you learned some new lighting techniques that you can take into your next interviews. If you haven't checked out my product video course yet and you wanna be making money from home, like me and the students in my course creating product videos, then check it out. The link to my product video course is in the bio below under everything you need to see or whatever, I don't know what I called it in there, but you click on that link and there's a bunch of different things in there, including my product video course. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please leave comments below with your favorite lighting setups. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time. Good. All right. Let's. All right. Oh, you good? <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> We've been recording. Oh, jeez. <laughs>